there is a matter here of uh, Christ and home emergency. Maybe shed some light to the people of my generation, men who are called in such a time. Yeah, and uh, tonight I want to speak about what's going on in the Ugandan church, where we have become the laughing stock of the nation. Um, right now what's going on are the fights of the so-called fathers of faith. The men who are at the center of what we would believe to be pioneers, men that are meant to, you know, um, okay, straight patterns of, uh, of, 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 of the next generation to act as an example of where the church should build their own. So tonight I want to have a few things to speak of but uh, yes i'm coming with a lot of pain and uh, intense manner of prayer this is a matter of church emergency it's a christ and Rome emergency where i'm calling upon every man and woman of god to pray for the church of uganda praise king jesus uh, you know we come from a place of of, of unity a place of power a place of understanding God and the kingdoms and the place of selflessness. We are founded on foundations of martyrdom where we see the, the sons of the land being martyred in, 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 the, in the 1880s, in the mid-1880s, 1886. The people like Chizito Moto, Buza, Baria, Obari Kudembe, who were martyred for the sake of the kingdom. Uganda is moving in the way of martyrdom where we must exchange our lives to that which God wants to do however in the current situation we are, are perishing daily and it's not because of any other thing but it is because we are stabbing ourselves from within the, 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 the church praise the Lord and it takes me to see how the church in Nigeria is running swiftly when we speak about the fathers of faith, uh, men like uh, Papa E.A. Adiboye in Nigeria, uh, more than 80 years old and still ministering in power. Every time he gets chance, he imparts the young generation. When I speak of uh, Papa Kumuyi of, of Nigeria, yes, also at the same age with Papa Ie Adiboye. When I speak of Papa Ad, uh, Oyedepo in the 70s, uh, Pastor Chris Oyakiromi in the 60s, and how these young upcoming ministers have shaken the generation, I realize that there is a mystery or a secret that comes if fathers are aligned in truth, you see? Because God planned it that uh, there are certain things we, we, we receive by impartation from the men who have gone before us. That is why the Bible says, remove not the ancient landmarks of your forefathers. Why? Because we learn from the patterns of the men who have gone before us. And when you see, you know, you would see Papa E. Adiboye imparting uh, um, Pastor Apostle Joshua Selman, you see. Lay your mighty hands on your children and anoint them afresh. Lay your hand on these children too and just do greater things through them than they can even dream possible. People imparting uh, Pastor Paul Enenche you will see Papa Ia Diboye, Papa Kumui imparting uh, Apostle Michael Oropo. And, and then after you see an energy that the upcoming generation of the Church of Nigeria is affecting the whole world with. I was watching one of my favorite uh, ministers of the word, um, uh, Pastor Arome Osai. Uh, ministering in Manchester and, and, and for the first time I saw the Spirit of God working mightily in terms of prayer, intercession and deep chantments in Manchester. I was like, now this is it. But when you look at the children of Nigeria or the sons of Nigeria, they have a testimony of their fathers. 
But Ugandan church is bleeding. It is bleeding deeply. It is dying daily. When we see the men who would have taught us the patterns killing each other on their radios and TVs. It is, it is quite a shame. It is a pain. It is a disgrace to us. We, 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 we have nothing to learn. Because these men have failed their mandate. I want to cry to the church of Uganda. I want to pass my voice to the church of Uganda. For us to rise and pray for our fathers. These men need prayers. Can you imagine men are spending hours. Men are, ca- can only you know, preach as long as they are speaking about another man. Ever since this matter. <laughs> Uh, usually, I don't want to mention my name. But it's on record. Pastor Senyonga has made over eight press conferences. What he's trying to explain, I don't know. I mean, uh, why, why would I spend all those press conferences explaining what. So the lies, I wrote to him a letter, I called him, he didn't answer me. I answer you, are you Secretary General of United Nations? I answer you for what? What is how you respond? I'm looking for a meeting and you are sending handcuffs. Send I, I was amazed. I was amazed. So, what you see going on, my name being mentioned, somebody told me that even this evening, my name was mentioned on that TV. And they say, I promised them money if they can frame Pastor Kayanja. You see? And when you come to the land and the atmospheres of Uganda, the realms of Uganda have made the church a laughing stock. People who don't have news, they can only call pastors. You see? Why? Because one pastor has something to say about the other pastor. Do we have faults in church? Yes, we do. Yes, we do have faults in church. But before I go any further, let me, let me read for you how we handle faults according to the word of God in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 2. Paradiventure, our men of God will, will hear the voice of God and, you know, our men of God will hear the voice of God and pardon themselves. We have been made a public spectacle like Jesus met the devil in the Hades. But now the church has made a public spectacle of enemies. Other people are laughing at us according to the way we are handling each other. Pastors have become a message of other pastors. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse, let's start from verse 1. Uh, probably we shall go up to some verse there. The Bible says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you you who are spiritual or you who are standing should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep a watch on yourself lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burden and also fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. When you think you're standing right, yet you're standing upon the grace, you yourself, you are weak. He says, you are in deception. Verse 4 says, but let each one test his own work. Ladies and gentlemen, Church of Uganda, God is telling us, let us test our own works. And then his reason to boost will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So lately I am seeing ministers. It has now gone to another level pronouncing names on their pulpits. 
speaking, you know, um, uh, ministry names. And you see, what you don't know, that you are being used of the devil to smite in the shepherd. And you know by scriptures, if you go to the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 31, Jesus speaks to Peter and speaks about that which is written, that when you smite the shepherd, the sheep scatter. You see, I have had men speak about Miracle Center. Do you know how many Miracle Centers are around Uganda? And the account of the souls that fall is the, the blood of the fallen men because of what you say on your TVs and radios from those, uh, from those higher grounds that God has given you to minister his word, but you're no longer ministering his word, you're ministering another person. The blood of the men that fall back to perdition is accounted on you and your children. That is why you should take heed before you attack a man. Look into what the man has done. It is very sad that a son of the land is speaking to the fathers, teaching the fathers what they would have known if they were humble enough to listen to the cry and the pains of the spirit. If God is using men in Nigeria to impact the next generation, as they wind up their work, who is going to follow you fathers when all we have seen are quarrels and fights we have no evidence of god in your latter days when we compare the results of the man who is fought and the men who are fighting it is a shame that we who think we should learn the patterns of the god of uganda through a man are seeing other men credible men over time in the matters of the kingdom also peeling the same man is there any possibility for a reconciliation for brothers? As Galatians is telling us in Galatians 6, 1, calling us brothers, if anyone is caught in transgression. Okay, let us say what you're saying is right. Let us say you have a point. Let us say you have evidence. The Bible is giving you guidelines on how to transact this. I expect these men to be mature enough to understand the sound of the Spirit in their hearts. But some of them are too selfish. And I, oh, I, I, I am forced to think men of such a caliber who would have been orchestrating patterns for the coming generation are also taken up by the media pressure. They need to be relevant on media. Why are you exposing or killing a man who has been a pillar and an image in the church. You see, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, in any sin, in any fault, you who claim to be spiritually sound, you who are spiritual, is spiritual, the Bible says, should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Ladies and gentlemen, we must know that the Spirit of God is gentle. And he says, as you're restoring him, keep watch on yourselves. Even these men who are speaking about a man, they have also had stories. We had stories of a woman, of a pastor's wife, who, who, who went away with a chapati maker. You see? You know how tight it is when you're dragged into media and locked therein. And you don't know that you're killing the church, not the man. Hallelujah. Now, let me show you something in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, uh, let, 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 me, let me go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. And I just need to show you something here that we must look into before we become a public spectacle, before we become... Uh, a laughing stock. Yeah? Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. The Bible says, O oh, awake, O oh sword, against my shepherd. There is a judgment from above that is going to judge the men of God in Uganda because of what you do. He says, There is that specific sword, that wrath, that rises when men do not know how to fulfill their responsibilities because as fathers you must 
be able to pass on the seed because it came from the chivangeles. It came from the matters. It went to the chivangeles. It went to the insivambis. It came down, you know, it came down to the pastor Kayanjas, to the pastor Valabie Kubo, where many of you came from, the pastor uh, Senyongas, the pastor Chigandas, you know, it came to the Apostle Mitalas, to the pastor Mulinde, to the pastor um, um, Pastor Chaze. And we are proud of you. But there is a pattern that is, is inherited that you are killing. The seed of Uganda is now defiled to the extent that it cannot be transferred. And in such a manner, God is saying in Zechariah, and hear the voice of God, Zechariah chapter 13 verse 7, Awake, O sword, against the shepherd, against the man who stands next to me, declares the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd, and the, sh and the sheep will scatter. I will turn my hand against the little ones. In the whole land, declares the Lord, two-thirds shall be cut off the, and perish. Can you imagine? And one-third shall be left alive. You see? And I will put this third into the fire to refine them as one refines, as one refines silver and test them as one tests gold. They will call upon my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people. And I will say, the Lord is my God. Praise the Lord. We have become enemies of each other. You see, enemies of each other. Yet we know by Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11, that God has given us pastors. He has given us apostles. He has given us teachers. He has given us prophets. Yeah. He has given us evangelists. He says, for the, ed for the work of ministry and for the edification of the saints. What edifies when all the services now are targeted to media on how we can undress each other? Why do we become the story of the hidden? Why are non-believers now becoming the example of the church? Because the church has no example to follow. And yes, I'm agitated in this session to speak about the power of the fathers that are crossing over a seed to a nation. And we want to thank God for the nation of Nigeria and what comes out. But when we look at our fathers, we the sons who are in the woods seeking of the things of the spirit, we, we, we are killed daily. Every man who rises up in this nation, Uganda, is battered by your funny, funny groups, Buffer, NPP, there is one who said, I am national, uh, born again, whatever. The buffers, you're killing us daily because now you no longer carry the spirit of the kingdom of God. You have become selfish. I saw a man standing in front of the president asking for houses, asking for cars, a bishop, things which money can give. Has the church of Uganda been polluted to the extent of forgetting about the power of seeking first the kingdom of God and the righteousness thereof? These demands have been made by the former leader of the National Fellowship of Born Again Pentecostal Churches, Joshua Lwele, at the consecration ceremony of his successor, Dr. Moses Odong, as the overseer of this fellowship. Now 60 years of our existence, we've never had a single government intervention to just give us a piece of land or even a building that you are doing a wonderful work. Give up, this is your place. You also be there so that you can do a work. This is that is the reason why we are killing ourselves and we don't know that behind the battle there are innocent bloods of believers that is being shed in the realms daily. Fathers, I want to speak to you. The blood of the men who fall when you fight shall be upon your hands and your children's and your children's children's hand. The ministry that you have is not a ministry 
of your family, it is the ministry of the kingdom of God. If you continue to lose or to scrub or to wipe out the footprints of our fathers who gave you the grace, those who died for the gospel, the likes of the Janan Luwumus who died but in their faith, as you wipe out their footprints, you have caused harm on the coming generation. Every time you fight, you make it so hard for the coming generation to understand the patterns. Because now your fights, I'm, I'm speaking a spiritual language, your fights are wiping footprints. War unto us, the sons of the church of Uganda. For now we have no example. We are crying daily, asking that probably in the woods of the spirit, we may find grace before God to give us an example once again. When sons look at you, you have become the first enemies of the church because of what you're doing. I don't know what to say. What can a son say to a father? What can a son say to a father? A man stood up and said, we are called to defend the faith and use the book of Jude it has one chapter, book of Jude 20 and 21, that we are called to defend our most holy faith. No, we are called to build our most holy faith, not to defend it. That's what the scriptures say. And now they are turning scriptures for their advantage to make sure that they make a point. This one is exposing this one. This one is exposing this one. Should, should I wish the Lord who sees in the secret, like Matthew 6, 6 says, he who sees in the secret can also expose your weaknesses. Why doesn't God expose you? Because he knows that love covers a multitude of sin. Love does not cover sin to, to, to stipulate it, to, to, to intubate it. No, love covers a multitude of sin to deal with it from within. Shame is a pain. Praise the Lord. So tonight I want to speak to the church. Wherever you are, if you're born again, let us stop laughing when fathers are undressing themselves in the public. It is a call for prayer. Every church, every man of God, every minister that is under the sound of my voice, if you can hear this from Apostle Arnold in Bazira, I beseech you every moment you get, pray for the church of Uganda and the men of God in this land. It is such a shame. And I also want to speak to our fathers. You're killing men thinking that you're proving a point. That is not the biblical way of dealing with issues. There is a better way. Woe unto us if we surely fail to leave the patterns to the next generation. Because our fathers, you have left such a heavy work to us. You don't know the reports we have down this side. Men are rejecting the gospel now. They are rejecting the, the, the message now because of what they see that you are doing. We cannot be born again because this man said this man this, that does this. This man, see, how are we going to preach the gospel when the men that have stood for the gospel for years have now made it a platform of fighting? Why do you have those television? Why do you have those radios? Is it that every program is meant to fight one another? You hear men preaching and all they are preaching is one another. I had one man has been made the laughing stock of the season because of the verbal diarrhea that comes out of his mouth on the pulpit, abusing everything, all in the name of retrieving to enemies. You have made the gospel so hard for this nation and for this generation because of the things you think that you're satisfying your egos. You have made the gospel so hard. Men are questioning us everywhere we go. There is no way we can penetrate when the fathers are locking heavens daily. Well, there is no way we can penetrate. So we are, the, as the sons of the land, we are missing the, the privilege of having fathers in the land. 
because you see you will see that whatever is in papa ear the boy is ancient it comes from pastor akidano akidayomi josiah you see you see it 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 whatever papa oyedepo has to give to the next generation that which is using to impart the pastor paul and inches that's which they used to impart the jo- johnson selman the michael rock pose that which uh, apostle arome uses to impart on the apostle edus on the uh, on the sons of the land you see uh, the theophilus sandys it comes from the ancient landmarks so we are missing the realities of fathers in the land because our fathers are fallen and uh, they, they they are taken away in their personal lusts and and egos they are consumed daily when you look at pastor chris you you see benson in the hosa pastor oyedepo you see benson in the hosa you see that there are landmarks these people have followed and patterns they have built upon that they have built their church and right now you can testify of the church of nigeria but you cannot unfortunately say the same on the church of uganda there is no man in the land of uganda who testifies of a father why because the fathers have not made disciples they have built their own kingdoms and they have become small gods therein and they do as they want they do as they want so this is a call to also our our elderly people in the church yeah the pastor mulindes the pastor alex mitalas the 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 you know the pastor uh, watante you get these men back in the church banange mukolecho nache musobola let me even speak this in uganda mukolecho nache musobola ekanise swara ekanise egwa simanyo ba muchiraba oba muchiwulira but no one is saying anything about this but it is quite a painful men are disgracing themselves the world is laughing at that which Christ did on his cross we have become a laughing stock we have become a reference of 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 abuse we have become a, a reference of immorality we have become a reference of of unseriousness and the gospel is becoming hard for our generation there is no way you can convince a man there is no way you can preach to a man who sees that your fathers are fighting and killing themselves daily men do not even want to associate with the gospel anymore not because that the gospel is not powerful we know that it is the power of god unto salvation but they are they they do not want to associate with the gospel because they don't want to be identified by men of egos and the fights and the internal strife that we have from within so if there is anything we can do to restore our fathers that we can also have the privilege of tapping into heaven through the impartation of our fathers through the blessings of our fathers through the hand of our fathers through the keys of our fathers that we may enter therein and the church of uganda will rise again the born again in uganda will rise again preaching the gospel from the from from the what should i call it from the affirmations of fathers you see i want us to look at the pulpits of our fathers you our fathers i want to ask you how many men have you made in your latter days when you ask pastor ade boy he will show you men that are made out of him when you past when you ask pastor kumwe he will tell you men that are made out of him when you past ask pastor oyedepo he will show you men that are made out of him of him when you past pastor chris you will see that men are made out of him you who which men are made out of you mufira kubututi mukuze you are grown you 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 are advanced in age but we don't see the young blood that you have mentored because you have not been a good example now we pray and we plead with god that if you come back on your knees in the realities of second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 if my people who are called by my name turn back and repent maybe god will help us to see a light in you that out of your flock shall you produce men who matter in nations like you have mattered to nations you have closed the doors of international ministry we who are called by 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 
by nations we are still cold because there are things we move we don't move in the authorities of fathers we move in lack we are moving in the deserts of the spirit because of you fathers so if there is anything because we are young we cannot do anything apart from praying for you but the elders of the church if you're there please come out let these matters be handled for we longer sons to, to to have a day where our tears will be wiped away where the bleeding will stop and we shall say that the god of uganda is still god the testimony of the kawempe movement is still a testimony the east african revival that happened in the 1930s we still hold the banner the men of god who have passed on to glory we are still moving in the light and the patterns so that also you fathers have men to leave behind have men to leave behind para adventure we can refer to you para adventure we can learn from you or else we can inherit what you carry but you have neglected the weightier issues and you're killing each other but woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces for you neither enter your souls nor allow those who would enter to go in says matthew chapter 23 verse 13 woe unto you this is what the fathers of uganda do a man who shuts the gates has certain keys you have the ability to make access for the sons of the church the young ones but all you do is to kill them you lock heavens for them and uganda no longer has access that's why you don't hear that there is a man who is doing like our fathers did in the 70s in the Kawempe movement that's why the wolves have entangled in the sheep in the sheep skin that is why we have forged miracles in the land there is no force that you can say that a man has a force in the land a few men have the numbers but we are not at the magnitude of the 70s where the true ugandan christian spirit that gives its life for the gospel stands and lights because of your fathers you have the ability to ascend and when you reach at the gates you have denied us access to serve the one true god may the lord have mercy on you may the lord have mercy on you If you can hear the voice of the spirit you will run out of the media even though they talk about you even though you talk about a person please 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 get back but the bible says the lord will cut you off with a sword if you do not raise up if you do not what you have to do yes zachariah certain says that the the, the sword and it's about to happen the sword of the lord is about to awaken we would also love in the next dispensation to testify about our fathers but which man of god testifies about the father who comes out of this generation and says this man helped me this man directed me this man rebuked me this man instructed me this man imparted on to me we are all starting new because many of you are off track but the lord says and a sword is going to awake upon the shepherd upon the shepherd and he says in verse 9 and i will put a third into a fire god will refine us god will redefine us god will help us and he will test us he says he will refine us as silver and test us as gold and we shall call upon his name and he will answer and we shall say the lord is our god and we are his people as i conclude this short session i want to send out the cry you see i want to send out the cry as a son of the land but not only as a son of the land but as a minister who has no anchor of a father 
we, we are hearing men in Uganda who have fathers in Nigeria. But look at the fathers in Nigeria. Look at how far they have gone and how they have deliberately taught the new generation of how to move in the spirit and the matters of the spirit. Right now, we cannot say our fathers are imparting. You meet for cases, not for kingdom duties. You meet for politics. Men are swept into politics. I have had pastors standing on their pulpits and speaking names of who we should vote. When did you become entangled with the earthly systems? And how are you going to help those who you have become puppets to. And I repeat as I finish, we are surely lost as the upcoming sons. As ministers, men have lost hope from us. What you're doing on social media, what you're doing on your TV, TVs and radios, what you're doing is not only killing your souls, you're also killing us. Our churches have, are affected because of what you say. If you could only wash your lips, if God could only touch your lips, men of God, once again. If God can only touch your lips, but you are killing the church daily. You're taking back Jesus at the cross as you fight individually. It is such disgracing. It is very disappointing. We are losing hope daily in the so-called fathers of Uganda. And we are praying as sons that in the midst of Saul, God will raise a David. We pray that in, a, in the existence of Eli, God will raise a Samuel. It's not what we want, but you have locked the heavens for so long. There is nothing we have learned from you even as we read your history, you're ejecting everything we have believed in you because of what you're saying. You have big numbers, but you're just using those platforms to have to, to, so to satisfy your ego and your desires. Men of God, we call as sons, behave yourselves. Stop disgracing the church of Christ in public and keep quiet. Let these matters be solved in silence. It, the, the Bible has told us in a gentle spirit. That's how we handle matters. We have a lot of enemies from without the church. But they are busy now laughing because the church is doing their duties. We are fighting each other. We are killing each other. I pray that as God remembered Nigeria, that even the land of Uganda is remembered. May the Lord have mercy on us. If you are an upcoming minister, a generation chosen by God in this nation, Uganda, let us cry. Let us fast. Let us pray. Let us tear our clothes and put on sackcloth as we pray for our fathers. As we pray for our fathers. Let us go back to the manual way of the gospel. Smear ourselves with 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 ash that paradiventure god will hear the cry of the church of the land because we the remnants are still there we still look forward we are broken daily our church's people are drying up because of the drama and the accusations that are flying on the internet it is hard now to preach the gospel because God, now men know us as fighters, as blasphemers, as insulters. We are known as, 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 as immorals. Our verbal composition is not even to the standards of the kingdom of God. You hear men abusing and people are now playing songs through pastors. Pastors are making names not as but the statutes and, and the things of the kingdom. No, they are making names because of what they say on the internet. I don't know whether it's likes that you're looking for or publicity that you're looking for. Let me tell you, seek first the kingdom of God. The rest shall be added. 
what are you if you leave this world without a record without a record of the faithfulness of the Lord without the record of lifting the cross without the record of bearing witness of that which God called you for praise the Lord imagine um, men are looking at their fathers as uh, vessels of succession and we now in our Uganda we are looking at conversations of fathers speaking about private parts on their pulpits. It does not matter how bitter you are over a man. Are you, a, you, 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 you are bitter to the extent that you are even uttering things that are not meant to be uttered in saints, even more so on the pulpit. And you admit it, the boys are right about the marks that they saw on you. In your private parts, you admit it in your statement. So, you are pushing this to this end. I never said this far. I have never come this far and I haven't even gone 25% we see and we know and we have information if you fight that way you see now all we are hearing it is there, there are some of the people in this nation that see the man you're talking about as, as, as a pillar of faith we would love to end up remembering the millions of people who changed their lives because of this man. The, the, the crusades this man made. And now it is ending in such like literally everything, every time you speak about something, man, God, God, cre God created a man in an envisionalizing, with an envisionalizing ability. Now they are, they, we, are, we, we are seeing fathers speak about marks on private parts. You see? So there is a cry on the sons of Uganda. Other men in other nations are seeing fathers and they are learning patterns. Even in the African culture, that is not permitted. Mukurumu no to yogera biyama to that extent. Mukurumu no. It is wisdom. You, you see, unless you just grew for, uh, unless you are not taught, there are things you can't say. So listen, the, wh wh what you're doing, even the non-believers cannot do. Even the non-believers cannot do. The last time I heard on such a scenario, it was Bill Clinton. But now I'm hearing it in church. You see? And that is where our pain is coming from. That is where we are comparing Uganda and Nigeria to, 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 you know, cry out to God. That maybe God can seize the fire and cause these fathers to look again in the havoc and the damage they are doing to the church. And you must know this thing is affecting us and the next generation. Every time you are falling in temptation you're dragging the generation with you as a father it takes extra additional efforts to lift it back to where it has to be in christ 